Tesla has been at the forefront of technological advancements in the automotive industry. While it's become patently clear that all other automakers are struggling to catch up even to older generation Tesla models, Elon Musk is already moving on to the next revolutionary way of designing vehicles. Notably, the GigaPress technology has been integrated across Tesla's vehicle lineup, employing large Giga castings that merge hundreds of components into single seamless parts. Additionally, Tesla has departed from the conventional skateboard architecture for electric vehicles, adopting more efficient structural battery packs resulting in a complete transformation of the vehicle manufacturing process. Furthermore, years ago, Elon Musk revealed that the Tesla Model S was equipped with 3 kilometers of wiring, while the Model 3 was designed to be more streamlined, significantly reducing it to 1.5 kilometers. This reduction aligned with Elon Musk's master plan of making the Model 3 half the price of the Model S, as part of his vision to invest in more affordable, high-volume electric vehicles. Initially, Elon Musk had ambitious plans for the Model Y to have an entirely new platform aiming for a remarkable 15 times reduction in wiring to 100 meters. However, his team convinced him otherwise to instead utilize the Model 3 platform for the Model Y, resulting in various benefits such as shared parts and faster time to market. This has led Tesla to where they are today, with the Model Y achieving incredible success, becoming the best-selling vehicle in the world. But Elon Musk isn't satisfied yet. His vision is still in play, and the massive reduction in vehicle wiring that he forecasted is now becoming a reality. Tesla is making significant changes, starting with the Cybertruck, by increasing the voltages in the vehicle and bringing key manufacturing capabilities in-house. This effort aims to establish an entirely new platform that will transform the company and potentially disrupt the auto market even further. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years on over 9,000 stocks, and it's all freely available. Electric vehicles, including Tesla cars, typically use a higher voltage system for their main power distribution, which is known as the high voltage or HV system. At present, many electric vehicles, including Tesla models, use a 400 volt HV system. However, the automotive industry is witnessing a growing trend towards transitioning to even higher voltages. Competitors like Audi, Kia, and Porsche already have vehicles on the road that use 800 volt architectures. These vehicles require a new set of components to handle the higher voltages, which manufacturers are beginning to make at higher scale. However, when Tesla unveiled the semi-truck, they announced that they selected a slightly less popular option, which was to use a 1000 volt architecture. One major advantage that Tesla has is that they make a huge percentage of their own vehicle components in-house, and rely much less on suppliers. This vertical integration was born out of past challenges, including poor treatment from industry suppliers and difficulties in obtaining the unique parts needed for Tesla's novel electric vehicles. At the time of Tesla's inception, electric vehicles were a new concept, and manufacturers lacked readily available catalog parts for them. As a result of these experiences, Tesla has evolved into a highly vertically integrated company. Building an entirely new 1000 volt architecture solely for the Tesla Semi, a low volume vehicle, may not seem practical. However, during the Semi event, Elon Musk announced that the Cybertruck would also adopt the 1000 volt design. Moreover, Tesla's next generation vehicle, about which little is known, is expected to leverage this high voltage as well. Notably, this vehicle is intended to become Tesla's highest volume production vehicle, with on the order of 5 million units sold per year. Tesla possesses the in-house expertise and manufacturing capabilities to develop and scale their own parts, a competitive advantage that many auto manufacturers lack. Relying heavily on tiered suppliers, other manufacturers may struggle to obtain the necessary high voltage components, especially considering their lower EV volumes relative to Tesla's dominant position in the market 
with over 60% of all electric vehicles sold in the United States being Teslas, with the remaining market share divided among the other players. Transitioning to a higher voltage system like Tesla's move from 400 volts to a 1000 volt architecture offers several benefits. Higher voltage systems facilitate faster charging rates, which is particularly important as charging infrastructure evolves and high power fast charging stations become more widespread. Tesla is starting to roll out their V4 superchargers to support the semi-truck but this could have major charging benefits for other vehicles that can handle the higher voltages and power. 1000 volts also helps to future-proof the EV technology as it offers more headroom for future improvements and innovations, again especially as the network continuously gets upgraded. An interesting aspect of electric vehicles is their use of inverters to convert DC power from the battery to AC power for the electric motor, along with DC to DC converters for auxiliary systems. Combining these functions into a bi-directional converter is possible since many components can be shared. This integration effectively reduces the number of components in the vehicle. In a higher voltage system, handling smaller currents allows for more efficient bi-directional converters with lower resistive losses and increased overall efficiency. One thing that falls out of this is the potential for vehicle-to-grid capability, which Tesla currently doesn't support. But during Investor Day, Elon Musk stated that the Cybertruck and all future generations of vehicles that Tesla makes will have this capability to discharge energy from the vehicle back into the grid. Again, the vehicle-to-grid aspect suggests that Tesla may be realizing advantages with higher voltages, helping to better enable further integration of inverters and DC-to-DC -DC converters. Now, vehicles also have a low voltage system which typically operates at 12 volts. This is used for ancillary functions such as lighting, infotainment systems, and various accessories. While on the other hand, the main power distribution ranging from 400 to 1000 volts is for high power components like electric motors, the battery pack, and therefore the charging infrastructure. With regards to low voltages, there are hundreds of components inside the vehicle which over the years have continued to get more power hungry. In Tesla vehicles alone, there are over 300 low voltage devices, encompassing a wide range of features, including the light in the glove box, to the infotainment computer, airbags, steer by wire, and brake by wire systems, among others. Now based on Tesla's investor day presentation, earlier Tesla models utilized a low voltage harness constructed from individual wires that were cut, crimped, and manually inserted into connectors. This labor-intensive installation process was prone to errors and didn't scale effectively, making system debugging and maintenance challenging. However, the introduction of the Model 3 marked a significant change. Tesla revolutionized the low-voltage system by reducing the wire count and overall weight, resulting in a substantial 17 kilogram reduction going from Model S's low voltage system to Model 3's. Then the Model Y took the low voltage system in Tesla vehicles to the next level. Tesla streamlined the design by merging controllers, further simplifying the system's architecture. The controllers in the Model Y were enhanced and put back into the Model 3 when the heat pump was introduced. These improvements were subsequently applied to the Model S and X in 2021. With the unveiling of the Cybertruck, Tesla has achieved an impressive 85% control over the design and supply chain at the component level of its controllers. This is up from 61% with the Model Y. This level of control empowers greater innovation and optimization of the low voltage system, showcasing Tesla's commitment to continuous improvement and efficient manufacturing processes. Looking at the tire pressure monitoring system as an example, in this system, each tire is equipped with a wireless sensor that measures air pressure and temperature. The data from all four tires is then transmitted to a central hub receiver inside the car. This hub communicates the tire data to the central computer, which displays it on the dashboard. When you order this system from a supplier, you would receive five separate components, four tire pressure sensors and one central hub. However, if a manufacturer like Tesla has control over all of these components, they can integrate the hub receiver directly into the vehicle control unit, eliminating the need for a separate component. This integration optimizes the design and reduces unnecessary complexity. And so when Tesla says they've achieved 85% of their controllers being made in-house for the Cybertruck, the denominator may have changed. 
having the total number of components being reduced, since Tesla may be able to find opportunities to merge components together as outlined. Now, the demand for power in cars has been steadily increasing since the year 1900, according to a chart posted by Tesla. Larger wires to drive over 200 amps around the car have been required, increasing mass and cost. And so starting with the Cybertruck, Tesla has adopted a 48-volt low-voltage system that's a four-fold increase from the traditional 12 volts. The advantage of this four-fold voltage increase is that it allows for a four-fold decrease in current to achieve the same power output since power is calculated as voltage multiplied by current. As a result, the power loss in the wires due to internal resistance is now reduced significantly, 16 times less to be precise, since power loss is proportional to the square of the current. This improvement makes the vehicle more efficient and enables the use of smaller wires, e-fuses, controllers, and heat sinks as lower resistance leads to less energy being lost as heat. This change presents an excellent opportunity for Tesla to reevaluate the design of their approximately 300 controllers. They can explore which controllers can be merged, streamlining the system even further. Additionally, Tesla has selected 15% of these controllers in the Cybertruck to be outsourced from reliable suppliers who can actually manufacture the components Tesla requires and deliver them at the necessary volume. This strategic approach allows Tesla to capitalize on the benefits of the 48 volt low voltage systems, even though the technology is not yet widely adopted in all vehicles today. And so this helps to explain, at least in part, why Elon Musk is saying that Cybertruck's ramp up could be bumpy, just like all of Tesla's previous ramp ups, due to the incorporation of all this new technology just for the low voltage system. Tesla is making over 255 low voltage controllers in house. They're going to be using 48 volts, which requires a redesign, and each component needs to ramp up production at the same time since a missing controller means the Cybertruck can't be shipped. But the major advantage is that once they're able to ramp up, the truck will be lighter, use less energy, and cost much less due to smaller components, and also because of removing the premium that's typically paid to middleman suppliers. Now in one of car specialist Sandy Monroe's earlier teardown videos, he seemed to mention that he had found wireless devices on some of Tesla's control chips even though nothing really came of this inside Tesla. Sandy Monroe has suggested in the past that wireless communication between vehicle controllers is a good option since it completely eliminates the wiring that's used to connect them. Now this does introduce a handful of other issues related to security and safety. However, non-critical components could make use of a Bluetooth connection where the reduced cost of not having communication wires outweighs the cost of having a wireless chip. This is also interesting since a single receiver could be reused to collect the data for many of the transmitters or sensors in the car. But it looks like Tesla may take an alternate approach. Even with wireless communications, each component still needs a wire going to it in order to get power. And so instead, they're using PoE, or power over ethernet, to transport both power and communication to each subsystem. This is also one of the key elements of Tesla's low voltage system, which is the shift from traditional CAN bus architecture to ethernet communication. The same as your home wired internet connection because the standard happens to use 48 volts. Ethernet is a game changer in automotive applications, offering higher data rates, improved scalability, and advanced networking features. It facilitates direct communication between controllers leading to a reduction in wires and simplifies debugging, especially in modern vehicles where the amount of data being transferred between subsystems continues to grow and to get more complex. Another advantage of Ethernet is its ability to support more advanced networking features, such as quality of service or QoS, which can prioritize certain types of traffic over others. This can be useful in automotive applications where real-time communication is important, such as for advanced driver assistance systems or autonomous driving features. Ethernet is also a scalable protocol, which means that it can be used for communication between just a few devices or between thousands of devices. This scalability is important as automotive systems become more complex and require more communication channels to operate effectively. Now, while Ethernet offers these benefits, it's worth noting that CAN bus does bring its own set of strengths 
including its proven robustness in the automotive industry and a track record which Ethernet will have to compete with. That said, Ethernet being a standard protocol enjoys widespread adoption and familiarity across various industries. This advantage facilitates easier integration into vehicles by automakers, benefiting from the existing wealth of knowledge and expertise with the protocol. However, it's crucial to recognize that automotive Ethernet has specific demands distinct from home-based Ethernet. In automotive applications, the startup time for a gigabit Ethernet link must be much faster, below 200 milliseconds, to avoid delays for users, for instance when opening car doors. Additionally, connectors need to be more robust to withstand vibrations and prevent disconnections, while cables should be smaller, potentially utilizing shielded cables to counter noise and interference. That said, the 100 base T1 standard tailored to automotive needs mandates an unshielded single twisted pair cable for data transmission and reception at 100 megabits per second speeds over communication distances of at least 15 meters. This addresses stringent automotive emissions requirements as well as concerns related to weight, cost, and footprint considerations. Tesla's low latency and low jitter Ethernet network are pivotal in minimizing cross-car wires and streamlining the wiring architecture. Elon Musk's vision for the Cybertruck involves nearly eliminating cross-car wires, with future generation vehicles completely eliminating them through the use of local controllers connected over Ethernet, which route wires to the nearest controller for efficient data transmission. And we can see in this high-level example that every controller near the back of the car needs a dedicated cross-car wire for communications and for power. But with power over Ethernet, these come essentially in the same wire, and the distance that the wire needs to travel from a sensor is no longer across the entire car. It just needs to talk to the nearest controller, since the controllers can talk to each other. And so each individual wire is much shorter compared to running a dedicated cable for every device. Furthermore, Tesla's innovative approach extends beyond the realm of vehicles. An intriguing aspect to consider is that Tesla has already developed its own proprietary high-speed Ethernet connectors for their Dojo supercomputer, which is a project quite distinct from their vehicles. Although the vehicles themselves may not demand the immense transfer speeds of hundreds of gigabytes per second like Dojo, Tesla could potentially leverage and repurpose this component for various in-vehicle controllers. Given that Tesla designed this proprietary connector in-house, it's likely robust enough to cater to these diverse use cases. Consequently, it makes sense for Tesla to manufacture and scale this technology into both the vehicle and Dojo applications. Tesla's journey towards higher voltages and optimized low voltage systems demonstrates their commitment to continued relentless innovation and sustainability. Embracing higher voltage architectures allows Tesla to streamline wiring, integrate functions, and enhance controller efficiency, leading to improved performance and cost effectiveness. By pushing the boundaries of technology, Tesla aims to provide its customers with an unparalleled driving experience, as they're on pace to fully control all of the controllers inside the vehicle. As Elon Musk envisions a revolutionary design for the next generation of Tesla products, the Cybertruck is that medium where Tesla can exercise its bleeding edge engineering prowess, highlighted by the move towards Ethernet-based communication. This may also influence the design of Tesla's other product lineups, including the Optimus robot. But for now, with Tesla's unwavering dedication to pushing the boundaries of technology, the automotive industry can expect to witness further groundbreaking developments in the future of vehicle design. And so how do you think Tesla's approach of manufacturing a significant portion of their own vehicle components influences their innovation and competitive advantage? And what are your thoughts on the growing trend of higher voltage systems and electric vehicles with regards to its impact on the future of the automotive industry? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to watch my video on Tesla's Cybertruck disrupting the pickup truck space. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.